All right, so we're set to continue the breakdown of the different orders of this class. So the class includes everything that we've been talking about, and that class is what? Whether it's a duck-billed platypus all the way down to a, uh, a spiny anteater to a brown mouse. All of them are what? Those are all mammals. So then when we say uh, the, the platypus as opposed to the mouse, those are both mammals, but then they're in different what, though? True. They're in different orders. It's then when you get down to the family level, okay, since we're talking about mice, who are some rodents that you can think of? There's seven in here. <laughs> that was mean and uncalled for. My apologies. I thought it was kind of funny. Maybe it wasn't. So if it wasn't, my apologies. That's what I like to do with bug spray. I, I'll say, oh, put bug spray on, and students are around. It's supposed to keep pests away, but they're still standing here. <laughs> right? Okay. So who are some different rodents then? We already gave you one example. Foals are mice. Squirrels are rodents. But when it comes to that of the mouse as opposed to the squirrel or squirrels, they might be in the same order, but they're in different what then? They're in different families. Okay, and that's what we've been talking about, especially when it comes to whether it's a polar bear, brown bear, or a lion, a gray wolf. Yes, all of them are mammals. Yes, they're all carnivores, but they're also in different families. Okay, so we had left off with, as you had said, bears. The polar bear is the last thing you remember writing. Okay. So I couldn't find it on here, but I see I have a little side note. Okay. So what we need to finish then is still some of these. So then just for our practical purposes, again, what we've talked about, canids, felines, of course, canidae, felidae, Eurycidae, okay, and then, okay, so that's what we've done so far. So now we're going to start with that of the largest family, okay, and these are called mustelids. I mean, if you just say mustelids in general, it's uh, mustel mustelidae, that's what we'll call it. Okay, so this is the largest family. Okay, and as we had alluded to earlier, we're not going to be putting a lot of these characteristics underneath like what we had started with. Even with these animals, I don't think we put a whole lot underneath there. The main thing is don't put a mountain lion under here or under here. We know that cats belong in this family. The gray wolf belongs here. Here's your polar bear. Here's your brown bear. Now, some of them are easy to get confused, but that's why we're going over this now. Okay, so this is the largest family, which would include wolverines, badgers, had a couple of other examples. Weasels, ferrets, and maybe you can remember those names easier than wolverines and badgers. So 
Just because we're writing some of these down doesn't mean you have to write them all down because maybe some of these make more sense than others. Okay, we've got one, two, three. Okay, three left of this carnivorous order. <clears throat> okay, so we'll just put a branch off of here. All right. Spell that right. No. I think there's an I on both sides. Yep, there we go. Okay, one of the things that we could have wrote down here for the mustelids, okay, they're well known for having scent glands on the surface of their skin to leave signals behind that this is their territory. But this one that is really closely related to the mustelids looks like one because of its facial features, but because of its smell then. That's all we would have to say. Yes, these are skunks. Yep. And sometimes I think maybe it makes sense to put some of these terms under here just to help you correlate the family name with some of the characteristics of that family. Oddly enough, it's, I know this is a fact too. Okay, and these are sometimes found as being a nuisance on the farm. I think we mentioned that last week. They have really, really sensitive paws. I mean, it's one where they can probably form an image, okay, I believe underwater, just by feeling with this, and their brain can kind of form an image of what it is they're looking for. Knowing the difference between a shrimp, maybe, and that of a rock, I mean, uh, or different types, or even clams, for instance, you can probably tell the difference between a clam and a rock, and the raccoons. Then one more family that we want to do for the order carnivora, okay? And those are what we call herpestidae. Okay. So 
So these also closely re resemble the mustelids. And I'll get out of your way shortly. I bet you can't see what I'm writing. I think we verbally talked about this one too. Uh, they've adapted the ability to attack snakes just because it doesn't really bother them. They've developed their own immune response to it to where it doesn't have that catastrophic effect on these animals. That's one. with a C, not a K. Huh. Glad I looked. Meerkats and mongoose, maybe mongooses. I don't know. Those are your herpistidae. Okay, so that does it for carnivorous families. Now we just have three herbivorous families to go through. So we can't have this up here anymore. Can we erase this? Are you still playing catch up? Again, the, the biggest thing is correlating the animal to the family. some of this here. Now, this gets to be a little tricky because this is why. Do we remember this from biology by chance? These are ungulates, so maybe that ungulate is a clue that would help you with this. Has to deal with hooves, that's right. They're odd or even. So then, is this an odd number or an even number? That's what you have to ask yourself. It is actually even, yep. So there's just two families that we want you to know for that. Okay, and that would be this surf, 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 surf day. Okay, so maybe just by looking at this, who might be an even number hooved? Not just mammal, not just artidactylian, but who might the bovidae family be? Cattle, okay? So when we look at bovine, okay, so we already know that for our purposes, we're going to do this. Because when we say each, you want to say hoof or foot? Of course, it means the same thing. This will make sense in just a moment. So who might be besides this? Typically, when you just say cattle, you just mean domestic cattle, just like what you see on 
someone's farm, the Angus, the red white face, the black white face, those are what we call domestic cattle. But can you elaborate on that perhaps just a little bit? North Dakota State, bison. So if we're talking about bison, who is really, really closely related to bison? Buffalo. Okay. And you have one. Okay, sheep, goats, okay, and there's one, one more specific aspect that I think that these separates from these, not just because of their, their toes, but how they consume their food, okay, because when this is your clue right here you could consider members of this family called ruminants why would that possibly be right okay so again these are referred to as your ruminants so how do these separate themselves from that of cervidae who else might be an herbivore that also has an even number of toes. Deer, okay, moose, elk, animals like that, okay? So here we want to say So this is why we see these in two separate orders. So they've got four toes. And I, I don't believe, and, and I could be wrong, um, and probably am, but whether they have a rumen like these animals here, they probably not quite as big just because when you picture deer, they're just not as large, although that would change when you get, of course, get to moose and, and caribou and elk, okay? And oddly enough, I got ruminants, so I was wrong. I have ruminants down here as well. Okay, so four toes, and something specific about the males in their breeding season. Because why is that important when you say antlers? Yeah, they'll fall off at the end of the breeding season. Bovine, does that happen? No, it does not. Their horns just keep growing. Okay. <clears throat> so. Foot. And here we're just going to put antlers. So we could say both of these uh, families are ruminants, and then we said what? Elk, moose, we should probably start with the most common one, that being deer, okay? Deer, elk, caribou, moose, okay? We're just running out of room there, okay? So then the last of these, if we change this to herbivores that are parasidactylia, okay, who might, what family might that be? We've said it. Who would belong in the equine family? Horses, that's right.
and zebras. That don't look right. Okay. And donkeys. The reason that's important is can horses and zebras, they're ne probably never found too close together, but can an offspring occur between a horse and a zebra? Perhaps. But is it something that mankind has done? Answer that would probably be no. But you can mix these two, a horse and a donkey, and get yeah. I almost was going to say Shrek's partner or Shrek's friend, but that was a donkey. Or do I have a horse and a mule gives you a donkey? A horse and a donkey gives you a mule. I'll have to check on that. I think that's probably enough for today because the only order we have left is rodents, which is gophers, mice and rats, beavers and squirrels. One of the things that we got to have pick a place to stop. I suppose we could have done uh, proboscidians, which is elephants, and then where rhinoceros and, and hippopotami fall into that, but I'm deciding to draw a hard line right here. Animals that belong in the families. The reason this extra material is in here is maybe that helps you correlate the family name with the animal that belongs in <coughs> these orders. Okay, so I think that's enough. We will... Uh, catch up to you tomorrow, vocabulary evaluation, and first one, second one, second one, okay, all right, we'll catch up to you next time.